ladies and gentlemen we are back inside age of empires mobile and today i'm gonna go over four features that age of empires mobile has done extremely well that i think other games in the genre should straight up copy they should just take these mechanics and ideas because they're implemented so good and of course we play a ton of rise of kingdoms here on the channel so i'd really like to see that game take some of these features and implement it as well but before we begin of course what's going on guys cheers now really quick age of empires mobile is currently in pre-registration and the game will be launching globally very soon in fact the game has already soft launched in many countries including Canada and the Philippines and I'm gonna have a list down in the description and in the pinned comment below for all the countries that allow you to play Age of Empires mobile right now but for everybody else you can use the link in the description to pre-register for the game today and using my link helps out the channel a ton because this video is sponsored by Age of Empires mobile the generous sponsors like them help me do what I do here on the channel so if you haven't pre-registered yet go ahead and click that link now before we jump into the list of features and systems systems that I think other games in this genre should copy the developers of age of empires mobile have communicated very clearly to me and I'm sure many others that they actually really admire rise of kingdoms they love ROK as a game and they're looking forward to operating alongside and cooperating with ROK to have a better landscape for players in general and so I just want to make it very clear that there is no like ROK versus age of empires mobile like that's that's not a thing like both of these games these games can coexist perfectly fine and have their own player bases and live alongside one another and if we're being honest age of empires is a very classic and respected franchise and i'd be willing to bet that some of the developers at rise of kingdoms probably drew some inspiration from some of the older age of empires games as well so i better not see any ridiculous comments hating either of these games okay now with all of that out of the way let's jump into the first feature that i wish other games in this genre would straight up copy and steal okay and we're going to be starting with the smallest features first and moving on to really big ones later in the video so stay tuned for that but the first thing boys you knew this was coming if you've played event age of empires mobile and you've watched any of my content over the past year you know that i have been asking rok for a fishing mini game ever since they originally discussed the possibility of them implementing it okay and here you can see in age of empires mobile i am playing this as i'm commentating okay um this is a very simple mini game where all you do is throw a net at the fish you collect them and at the very end of all this the number of points that you've gotten for the amount of fish that you've caught is going to allow you to redeem them for a certain amount of chests okay and these chests basically give you food for your account for your soldiers for training things for upgrading things for making progress in the game and I think this is super cool okay now I'm gonna focus for the next three throws see if we can get as many fish as possible and then I'll explain why I love this feature so much okay there we go that was not my best performance but I do have two more I can go fishing later if I want but here you can see that I can rest and I can go into my points chest and I can redeem this for a bunch of food for my account for free and I can do this every single day up to three times per day now the reason that I love this feature so much right because a lot of you might be watching and thinking Omni York this is ridiculous right like fishing what are we talking about like this is a mobile war game like why are we talking about fishing and the reason is because this is a unique mini game that is completely independent of the mechanics of war of the mechanics of open field fighting it is a completely unique very simple but unique mini game that is implemented into age of empires mobile that has so many different ways that it can be expanded in the future right for now this is just a way to get some food every day but later down the line let's say they introduce a new chapter or a new season or a new theme then maybe the developers can implement ways that players can get unique items from a system like this for example halloween or christmas or even a kvk event or something like that there's an opportunity here to make this a unique mini game that can provide some real value for players beyond just food and what I love about this is that it's a mini game it's strictly like yes there is value here because you get food for the for the progress of your account but it's mostly just for fun right like really you're just having fun when you're fishing in this mini game and that's it it's just a quick 30 second 20 second thing you just try to see if you can get as many points as possible there's no high risk high reward there's no FOMO there's no probabilities or chances or dice rolls or anything like that it's just purely simple purely for fun to see how many points you can get and that's it and I feel like a lot of city builder war strategy games completely miss the whole aspect of implementing small mini games like this that are just 
there for fun that's it i find it kind of relaxing and if you turn on the music and listen to the sounds of the fishing mini game i find it quite enjoyable and i think other games should take this idea and run with it moving on to feature number two this is another very simple feature in the game and that is none other than the villager system you can see at the top of my screen i'm currently utilizing 56 of my 61 available villagers okay and basically what villagers do in the game they're just well as the name implies they're just villagers they're just people that live with within your castle walls. There are actual people that you can give commands to, to do things in your city. And again, this is a very bare bones, simple feature. And perhaps the developers of Age of Empires will further expand this as the game progresses and as it's been out and as they add more things to the game. But as you can see here, if we zoom into my farms, you can actually see all of the villagers that are actually working on the farm. Like I can come in here and I can remove these villagers for whatever reason. Now, you know, the only reason you would ever do that is if you want to put them somewhere else, right? There's no benefit to having fewer villagers completing a task. But as you can see here, as I add more villagers, I increase the production of this farm. Okay. So adding the villager brought it from 200 per hour to 600 per hour, and then it goes up to a thousand and then 1400. Okay. So as a player making that conscious choice gives you a reward, you can actually sort of micromanage your city and you feel like your choices matter. Now, as I said before, there's really no downside to just putting as many villagers everywhere as possible. And so from an actual complexity perspective, this is a very simple feature, right? It's, it's very, very simple. There's not that much strategy involved, but for example, you'll see off on the bottom left corner of your castle of your, of your city, basically, you're going to see some things that sort of respawn. I think these respawn every day, if I'm not mistaken, but here you can see that there is a gold mine that was just outside my city that I found here. We could see a quarry that was outside my city. And what you can do is for example, this berry bush right here. Okay. It's just sitting outside my city doing nothing, but I can actually send my villagers here to go and collect the berries from this bush. And then those berries are going to turn into actual food on my account. I know the symbol for food is a piece of meat, obviously, but don't be mistaken. These berries are actually going to be food that goes into my food supply for my city. And I can use that to train troops and things like that. Right. And now you can see at the top of the screen, I'm utilizing 59 out of my 61 villagers to complete tasks in the city. And I mean, it doesn't stop there, right? I have villagers that are assigned to my quarry and also to my gold mine. Right. And as you level up these buildings, you can actually put more villagers inside these buildings to increase the amount that they're producing over time so again this is a very simple system but from an immersion perspective I feel like I'm actually managing the city myself and I'm making those conscious decisions rather than these buildings just automatically producing things over time which is kind of what they're doing because like I said you're, you're pretty much always gonna have max villagers and everything that you can but it's still nice to have that choice and have that ability to do so because it's just one more decision that you make and it makes it feel like your decisions actually matter and for what it's worth your villager capacity is dictated by the level of your houses in your actual city and you can get more villagers at your town center you can literally train them here right so there's like different layers to the system and while each layer is relatively self-explanatory and simple i like the system a lot okay moving on to feature number three this is a massive feature and we're coming outside of my city walls here to show this off but i love this feature this feature is incredible and i genuinely think that every city builder mobile game should have this feature Feature, okay and that is none other than the auto battle feature that I discussed in my beginner's guide video if you guys missed my beginner's guide you definitely should check that out before watching the rest of this video that's gonna get you started it's like 40 50 minutes long and it's gonna tell you basically everything you need to know to hit the ground running with Age of Empires mobile but in that video I actually discussed a auto battle feature as you can see right here auto field battle and what this does is when you click this button it's going to give you a few parameters that you can set up to start auto battle now in order to set up the auto battle you're first going to choose the type of tribe that you want to be attacking so here you can see I've selected tribes and I've selected pikemen next you're going to click the auto field battle button and here you can see a few different options first of all for the level 14 common pikemen I can choose which of my preset and pre-configured armies I want to use to do the auto battling and the game will recommend to you the type that actually counters the troop that you're going to be auto battling so for example if I'm going to be auto battling pikemen it would make the most sense to use an army filled with swordsmen because that's actually what counters the pikemen and so I'm gonna get the best trades and I'm gonna have the least amount of wounded units when I'm auto battling with swordsmen so it recommends that I use my Josephine with my Herald here and then you can set a few more parameters off on the top right it'll say minimum units in troop so 
basically because the game is going to be auto battling you can tell it when to stop so for example if i don't have enough swordsmen to at least have a 90 percent full army so for right now i have a full 100 percent army because I have 19,200 out of 19,200 available units. But if my hospital fills up so much such that I can't even get 90% of this, then the game is going to stop the auto battle. That way I don't overfill my hospital. Another parameter that you can set is how much of your hospital you're willing to fill with the auto battle feature. So for me, I've set it to 90% for both of these, just to give me a little bit of buffer room. I think if this army was at 90% health, it could still defeat the common pikemen, no problem. And also if my hospital is at 90%, which it never will get to that point based on the level of tribe that I'm going to be killing here. But if it did get to that point, at least there'll be a little bit of wiggle room in case anything crazy happens. Okay. So now that I've set these parameters and you can choose like kind of whatever you want here, you can also choose how many attack attempts you want to do and the maximum that i can do is 20 because you can see that i have 100 stamina and each attack will cost five stamina so i can only do this a maximum of 20 times and finally it'll tell me if i have an advantage like what is the probability that i'll be able to defeat these armies and you should only do this if you have a pretty good advantage okay you don't want to be breaking in every time because that's going to fill your hospital quickly but basically once you've set all these parameters to how you like it you can click auto battle and what the game is going to do is it searches for the nearest pikeman of the selected a level that I've chosen and it will send out my Josephine my full swordsman army and that army is going to automatically walk to that unit it's going to fight that tribe and once it wins or loses it'll go back to my city and then it will send out that army again and basically it's going to keep doing this until it hits one of the parameters or I run out of stamina and that's it what's awesome about this though is that you can set up multiple armies for multiple auto battles so here i've selected cavalry level 14 and now it's recommending that i use my joan of arc army because these are pikemen and they counter the cavalry so with the same amount of parameters set i can also auto battle here as well and now you could see my joan of arc has located the closest level 14 cavalry unit and it's going to fight and here you can see my josephine has defeated that uh, tribe and it's walking back to my city to gain as many troops as possible and then it's going to go out and fight again so here we see josephine came back to my city and then we had joan of arc who just completed killing a tribe she came back to my city and now she's automatically going to the next one now josephine didn't automatically go out of my city because there's actually not another level 14 pikeman tribe nearby my city and so if there's no one auto battle then it then it just stops but here you can see josephine is still going and what i could then do is come and look for archers and we could do the same thing it's recommending darius the great because that's cavalry and that will counter it so let's go ahead and start the auto battle and a boom there we go now my darius comes out of my city and starts attacking and this feature is so nice because what i can now do with those two armies auto battling is i can come back to my city and i can just do the rest of my daily quests or i can focus on other things i can check my mail i can do whatever it is that i need to do to finish the quest or challenge quests or whatever and i know that I'm not going to be sitting here with capped out stamina, right? You want to get as much value out of your stamina as possible. And by value, I mean the things that you actually get from defeating these tribes out in the world, right? So here you can see I got alliance coins, alliance funds, building speed ups. I got some food, wood, stone, gold, experience, and skill points. So I've gotten a bunch of these things for each tribe that I've killed. And now, again, as you see over here, they're fresh health. They came back to my city, they walked out, and they're just auto battling these nearby tribes and they're spending down my stamina and the reason that I love this feature so much is because grinding barbarians and grinding these tribes is like something that you should do and have to do every day to get the maximum value and progression for your account but it's not necessarily fun and it's also not challenging right like this is content that you know you're not you're not a better player if you are grinding barbs every day right you might get more rewards but it's not like you're overcoming a challenge that other people can't do like if you know with 100 certainty that you will never die to a tribe or barbarian then why not have this feature in the game right why make players waste their time grinding content that is basically impossible for them to lose to just so that way they can get value like 
it is such a boring process to have to do this manually and this auto battle feature is such an insanely good quality of life feature that shows that the developers are actually respecting the player's time right i as a player don't have to waste my time grinding content that's generally boring right i mean after your first victory against these barbarians once you know that you can definitely beat them 100 of the time without fail well it kind of becomes a little boring right like there's no stakes there and so the game says okay we know that you can do this we'll just have it do it for you automatically that way you can still get the rewards and you don't have to waste your time i love it and i really think that more games in the genre should do this i mean this is such an incredible quality of life feature and i love that age of empires mobile has implemented something like this and i hope other games do too okay now the fourth and final feature that we're going to be talking about in this video is the skill and rank progression systems for the heroes here in age of empires mobile these systems i think are superior to other games in the genre and there's a couple of reasons for that first of all the most important skill for a hero is their commander skill now the skill only works if they are the primary or the commander of an army so the second in command their commander skill will not work but this skill is the most impactful that a hero has and it's important for new players to not mess this up okay and in other city builder games it is possible to progress your commander or your hero to a point where you actually skip their most important skill and that's a really bad way to punish a new player who just doesn't know what they're doing but in age of empires mobile the commander skill their most important skill is leveled up just by leveling up the hero itself so as i level up joan of arc her level for her commander skill her most important skill is automatically going to go up so as you can see here once she's level 60 her commander skill will go from 20 to 25 and so there is no way to mess this up for any commander in the game you will always be able to level up their most important skill just by leveling up the hero also what this means is that there's no additional currency that is needed to level up this skill you just need experience tombs to level up your hero and you're automatically going to get new levels on your commander skill in other games there are other resources that might be really hard to come by like for example in ROK there are legendary commander sculptures these are quite rare and you have to use those to level up your most important skill but in this game as you level up the hero you're automatically going to get that skill which is important additionally I love the rank system here so as you can see Joan of Arc is a five star hero as opposed to the heroes with a purple background they are four stars so by default the five star heroes have five ranks to them they start at rank zero and as you get enough medals of that hero you can add ranks to them okay so you don't need medals of a hero to increase their skills all you need additional copies of that hero for are to increase their rank and what do you get for this well the first rank on Josephine increases her war cries recovery rate by 35 percent her second rank gives her more base stats the third rank gives her more war cry damage her fourth rank gives her more base stats and her final rank gives her a five percent increased activation chance now for some heroes these ranks might be super important right but for other heroes these ranks might not be as impactful and again I'm not trying to say that these aren't useful but a couple of base points for your might I mean yes that's going to increase the damage that you deal with might skills but ultimately if you compare this to what you use in rise of kingdoms so for example in rise of kingdoms additional copies of a commander are called sculptures okay and those sculptures are used to increase the skills and a fully maxed out commander in rise of kingdoms typically has a pretty big advantage over a non-maxed version whereas in age of empires mobile yeah a fully maxed out rank five hero is going to be better but a player with a rank zero or a rank one or maybe a rank two compared to a rank five player that difference to me doesn't seem as big as you know in rise of kingdoms a player who has a legendary that is just unlocked i mean all their skills are going to be at one they're actually kind of useless unless you put sculptures into them right and so i really like this system this kind of reminds me of games like genshin impact where you get a five star hero or a five star character and they're perfectly usable out of the box at five stars you just have to level them up right i like that system a lot because it makes it feel like you have something rare and you can use it without having to max it out whereas in other games it feels like yes you have something rare but unless it's maxed out it's not usable at all and so i really like this system now you might be thinking okay well if you use duplicate copies of a hero and in this case they're called hero medals if you use them to level up the rank of a hero well then how do you level up the skills of the hero and that is done with a universal currency 
called skill points and you get these skill points by defeating tribes out in the world or from your alliance shop or from a various number of other ways and you can use these skill points on any hero that you want they're completely universal so I can use my skill points to upgrade this skill on my Josephine and then I can come in here to Joan of Arc and I can do the same thing for the same cost with the same currency it's not locked to any given hero and I love this right because that lets you decide exactly what you want to do with all of your skill points now again this is kind of like in rise of kingdoms where they have a universal legendary commander sculptures you can use them on any legendary which is nice it's similar in this game but the skill points are much easier to come by right like in rise of kingdoms there's no way to get a legendary commander sculpture by just defeating a regular barbarian out in the world whereas in this game you do get skill points for defeating tribes out in the world even if it's a small amount you can still grind your way up and earn progress on skills for commanders of your choosing and i love this but it doesn't stop there because the last two skills of any commander are called configurable skills you have your first configurable skill here and your second configurable skill and what this means is for any given hero you can choose what the last two skills are for that hero amongst a list of predefined skills now some of these are better than others and some of them have a higher rarity than others we see a four star skill versus a five star skill for example but what this does is it lets you customize your hero for the specific thing that you want to do with that hero and by being able to choose what you put in these skill slots gives you more customization for what you want to actually be doing with that hero and a lot of times these skills skills are going to be revolving around what that hero is actually doing so Josephine is an attack and recovery based hero and so the configurable skills that she has available to her are going to revolve around those types of things so for example protracted battle recovers your units every six normal attacks this is a recovery skill that is given to Josephine because she is a recover hero likewise Darius the Great has configurable skills that allow him to gather faster out in the world and that's because he is a gather hero and the best part about these being configurable is that if later on the line I want to swap this skill out with something else any progress that I've made on that skill for example this is level eight the progress that I've made on this skill will remain because you're actually when you're investing skill points here you're actually upgrading the slot that it's in rather than the skill itself which is really nice so if I swap over to Sunder here you're going to see that it costs zero to swap them and now my Sunder is level nine which is previously what my gathering skill was and so for times of war I can have Sunder at level nine and then for times of peace I can replace it with efficient harvest and again it costs nothing and boom now I have faster gathering speed I love this system it gives you more strategy it gives you more customization and because all of this uses universal skill points you can make that decision all on your own and only time will tell but I suspect in the future this custom customizable skill system is going to lend really nicely to power creep and what I mean by that is if you're able to change your skills later down the line then maybe a hero remains relevant for a longer period of time in other city builder games as power creep comes into the game the older heroes or commanders start to become less relevant over time because their skills and their talents are locked they are set in stone right but in this game let's say a another hero comes out that is similar to Josephine but is a little bit better well what do you mean by better right maybe they have different customizable skills and okay maybe there's something maybe a new commander comes out that does Josephine's role better than her but with that being said you might be able to just switch the skills on Josephine and now you can use her for something else and I really really like that and I think that this system as a whole is just an improvement on similar systems in other city builders games anyway guys those are four features that I hope other city builder games like ROK okay can adopt and can learn from Age of Empires mobile I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section below what do you think about these features do you think that I'm right about these things do you think that these are good quality of life features or do you disagree while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it'll help get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Age of Empires mobile players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload an Age of Empires mobile video and of course I'd like to thank Age of Empires mobile once again for sponsoring today's video Video. just a reminder you can pre-register for the game today if it's not already out in your country with the link in the description below and that will help my channel out a ton I wouldn't be able to do what I do here on YouTube without generous sponsors like Age of Empires Mobile and check the pinned comment to see if you're in a country where the soft launch has already been underway for a few weeks now you might be able to play Age of Empires Mobile today with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace